Hello, uh, we are at the 80th, 80th uh, Coldstream Harbor Laboratory Symposium. Uh, I'm Eitan Slotorinsky, and with me is uh, Genevieve Almuzny from the Curie Institute in Paris. Hello, Genevieve. Um, so you're interested in uh, chromatin structure and chromosome organization during the cell cycle and development, and with special interest in uh, histone variants. So first, maybe you should ask why histone variants? I mean, what is the significance of certain histone variants for chromosome organization? Well, um, if um, I can just uh, explain, uh, with the variant, you have the possibility of having distinct modules. So that gives uh, uh, variability in the basic uh, particle, that is the nucleosome. And uh, they can mark particular region of the genome. So I think the most uh, striking example is the centromeric variant, uh, SENPE in mammals, also called SENE3 in different species, that is really marking the sites where you build up uh, the kinetor core that is important for the segregation of chromosome. So I think understanding how you get this particular mark there and how that is then maintained is uh, absolutely fascinating. Indeed. So um, you and others, um you have been studying um, centromere dynamics, kinetochore dynamics, uh, for example, by, uh, you, by uh, following the formation of uh, synthetic centromeres at ectopic loci, but also by other means. So uh, what were your main findings about um, how um, SEMP-A and in general histone variants, uh, the role of SEMP-A and its interacting proteins in uh, centromere formation uh, during the cell cycle in general? So. Uh the one thing that I, I would like to stress with respect to the dynamics during the cell cycle of uh, SNP deposition is this very particular time window when you bring it uh, as a new uh, uh, sort of uh, way to replenish yes. uh, the organization of the domain, which is in late mitosis. And so for me that was a surprise because I've been working a lot uh, in terms of considering what happens after replication, replication where you duplicate indeed. and you think that it's just after replication that you put things right. in. DNA. But in that case, there's a delay. So you have a dilution of the centromeric variant and it's only later, mm -hmm. uh, late mitosis, that you put it in. And in this respect, what was really, really interesting is to find that uh, a component that is key for the deposition at this time is this chaperone called uh, HGERP, uh, which uh, really uh, gets there at the right time to uh, put it in, in place. So that, that was really uh, something uh, very important for me. And uh, we discovered that uh, at the same time as Don Cleveland by trying to analyze the complexes that are soluble, so prior to deposition. So, um, so, do you know now um, why it is uh, the deposition is delayed to the uh, later? Uh, yes, uh, the, the 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 reason is that uh, we uh, uh, we found that there's a regulation that uh, exploits uh, the modification of its job by phosphorylation, right. and so if you interfere with this capacity of phosphorylating its job, it can be there all the time. So, which is so by default. So, so you have to prevent the phosphorylation so that you get it uh, out of the way. So you restrict the time window when it gets there. So that's very important, but then it's not enough. You also have, in addition to be there, to be active to uh, enable the loading of uh, SENPE. And that requires uh, some particular property of HGERP uh, that correspond to a region where we delineated um, binding, DNA binding uh, properties. So um, beyond SEMPA specifically, do um, post-transcriptional modifications of, of SEMPA on other, other histones play a role uh, uh, or play a role in, in the deposition of SEMPA or maybe with uh, HGERP and activity of HGERP? Well, in terms of um, post-translational modification, there are also some uh, modification on SENPE itself, yes. which seems to be also participating in these dynamics. But then there's also the whole um, area that has to be receptive for the centromeric variant to be brought in. So then it's other type of uh, variant there that can be modified. And so there's uh, modification by acetylation uh, that uh, also uh, provide this uh, sort of uh, uh, potential for remodeling the region and enabling to uh, get sent. So it open, opens the chromatin further exactly. for the... Exactly, yes. So to specifically be at the centromeres, because the, the entire um, chromosome at this stage is, is well packed. It is. Except uh, for these, uh, in these, these specific in these regions. regions. Yes. Right. 
But I think that uh, perhaps it's also another lesson to, to, to take from uh, these studies is that this late time in mitosis, um, early G1, yes. is a very important time where you reorganize the genome to uh, re-enter into uh, the next uh, interphase and then uh, S phase. And so, so um, you've heard uh, during the talk uh, the time decision point for yes. replication. Yes. This is decided during that same time window. Uh, it's also during that same time window that the reorganization with the uh, detection of uh, what is called TAD is yes. observed. So, so I think we have a lot to learn about what's going on uh, during that time window. Right. So uh, centromeres are, um, are uh, marked for late replication, uh, I presume, because of the... the Mid-late, the, mid -late. Well, uh, yes. Well, and it depends the in the species as okay. well. But in mammals, that is true. Yeah. Yes. So uh, h Jerp and uh, maybe other... Um, um, uh, histone chaperones have uh, have roles in uh, in the DNA damage response. Uh, that could um, suggest that they might uh, have roles in, uh, in cellular transformation or even tumor genesis. Um, is anything known about that? About the relation between um, histone variants or histone uh, chaperones and cancer? Oh, there's a lot actually in that direction. So I think that in the last couple of years, yes. uh, people have uh, realized that uh, there were particular mutations that were found in H3.3, for example, and uh, also in H3 that were associated with pediatric glioblastoma. Yes. And uh, one of the questions is also to understand how there can be crosstalk between uh, the use of one variant or another by particular chaperone. So while I was saying that uh, HRP is really dedicated to sand pay deposition, yeah. we also see that when it's overwhelmed, so when there's um, an excess of sand pay, yeah. then uh, uh, it's uh, DAX that uh, is taking over and is then bringing senpei at ectopic places. Right. And so this is also opening up a uh, very uh, uh, stimulating uh, hypothesis in terms of how this could contribute to uh, the way uh, cells could cope with DNA damage, um, actually. Yes. And so we, we are really uh, trying to explore these areas. So well. that leads presumably to um, chromosomal misaggregation? If, or if you have several active centromeres, kinetochores? Well, uh, for the moment, uh, our view uh, is, is more that uh, you have uh, the, uh, the active kinetochore that uh, is inhibiting any other places right. to be active. So uh, we entertain the, the idea that if you create breaks, then that would unleash uh, exactly. uh, the capacity and you have uh, potentially the capacity to uh, to form uh, a new kinetochore, enabling then this particular cell to keep exactly. uh, the, to the material yeah. and to propagate, so giving them potentially an advantage. Yeah, if it's advantageous, so will we'll yes. right to cancer. Exactly, yeah. and maybe that can help also uh, for these cells to evolve and adapt to um, the environment. So, yes. Yeah. So well, now we're entering to, to, to summer, to, to wrap it up, we're entering maybe into some more speculative. Do you think or do you know uh, if there are other regions in the chromosomes beyond centromeres that have um, such an integrate uh, relationship between specific uh, histone variants and their function? Well, there's uh, one uh, area which I find very interesting is the telomere. And uh, in this respect, what we also found is by uh, exploring the function of another chaperone called uh, ASF1, that when you downregulate ASF1, you start to have a mismanagement of the variant, the deposition uh, mm -hmm. in the in the telomere, and uh, the alt pathway can be triggered. And so this right. uh, pathway enables uh, uh, some of the cancer cells to be maintained uh, in yeah. uh, absence of um, uh, uh, telomerase. Uh, so it yeah. maintains the, the integrity of the telomeres uh, by in, other means. By other means. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's an alternative pathway, <laughs> basically. So that yeah. that that is also a connection to uh, to the DNA damage response yes to DNA yeah. damage response and to cancer obviously, and to cancer, obviously yeah. Yeah. because there's a number of cancer cells that have uh, adopted the alt pathway to survive yeah exactly yeah well, thank you very much it's uh, very interesting well thank you for your time and interest <laughs>